with Saber Sim expecting to fully sunset the old version of their contest sims and their lineup builder, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I figured I'd walk you through the new version, especially through uh, you know how you get it through our website and everything. Now I know the Saber Sim users through Saber Sim themselves have had it for a while now. We've had it live on the site for around two weeks now, so I apologize it's a little bit late. Uh, but I just wanted to walk you through where things are in the new ones, how you do the new ones, how I or how you do the new one, how I specifically use it myself, because uh, I know I, I do things pretty differently. Um, but I just wanted to walk you through and, and certainly doing it by comparing the old version with the new version and certainly showing you where things have been moved to, where certain buttons are, maybe some things aren't labeled the exact same, uh, just trying to um, just help you understand how to use it. So and clearly this is the old version here. We'll be referring to this if you guys, or we'll be referring back to this to be like, oh, this is now located here, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you're using it through us, which I, I would encourage you to get it through us, you'll go ahead and find it right here, right under the tools uh, section, and you'll see the Saber Sim, which is the new version, which you can see the URL has changed to the Saber Sim versus the old one that was just optimizer on our own site. Um, and now it's much easier to upload your own entries. And the reason why you would do this is basically saving time. Now, I personally do not use this aspect because the way I build and upload lineups are pretty drastically different, uh, mainly because I still go through it, hand build most things, or at least look through. Um, but it's much easier now to select the contest sims because if you have your CSV or if you have contest reserved on DraftKings, you can go ahead and pull the CSV from that. Uh, you know, the old one that you would upload, you know, you'd throw in a Google Sheet that would have the contest that you're in then a blank space where all your players are. You can just upload that directly into SaberSim and it'll give you or it'll automatically select the contest that you are in. Now, if you aren't in any contest and say you can use this for early morning previews or if you're just looking ahead towards, hey, what are the NFL games this weekend? Hey, what, is, what are the NHL games tomorrow, later today? Maybe it's like 9 o'clock in the morning and you just want to get an idea of how things would shape up, but you don't have any contest reserved on the site yet. Or if you're like me, you don't typically reserve uh, things until you know a few hours before. Uh, you can actually just right-click on this screen, actually, just right click where uh, the sims are, and you can just add a personal contest sim. And you can name that, you know, whatever gibberish you want. And you can use the also, we'll talk about this more when we get to the actual contest uh, or the sim, the, the contest sims portion of this video, but just really fast, okay, whether you're using Saber Sim or people are using their own sims that they've made at home, okay. Sims, and I've heard this from good friends of mine, Sims should not be treated as, oh, this is a flaw in the system. Let me go ahead and go around that or do something to, you know, make the contest sim better. If you're using contest sims, and there's reasons why I choose Saber Sims contest sims for certain sports and not other sports, uh, we can discuss that later, but... If you are believing in the sim or the product that you're using, okay, you should not be having to add your own field lineups. You should not be having to manually go in and make it do certain things or have it go certain ways or whatever. You should trust the product that you're using, okay? And so, like, for this example, we can just add Saber Sim's own, you know, ownership. And this is, you know, for some showdown NFL or NHL thing. I'm just showing where you would go to find this. You can go ahead and select any of the contest sims that are already displayed on here, or that would be displayed on DraftKings uh, in their lobby, and you can just click whatever. You can go ahead and select that and automatically give the contest size, the percentage of first positions paid out, and that's how you would save um, the contest. Now, I actually want to go ahead and do this with um, games that have already happened, uh, not necessarily uh, for any specific reason. I just think it'd be easier to explain this in hindsight versus, oh, let's look ahead towards the NFL thing on um on like this weekend or whatever so like if we look at like monday for example during the nfl games right now at this point everything's already been played out we we already you know we understand what happened and everything in this game and we can look back and see how things would have played out so we'll just go ahead and like add our sims which i would assume if you're using the new one because you can't you can't run contest sims until you select the sims right or until you select whatever contest you're in so this would be like your first step that you do you add your sim whatever it doesn't doesn't matter what we're using here and we'll put we'll, we'll just put in you know some i'd rather find the big contest to show examples here 
that would be we'll just use like use a chain mover really fast 9,000 people not not bad okay so you know now at this point you know we can see that this screen is drastically different from the from the old saber sim one and the fact that they've removed the download and upload you know might confuse some people if you're uploading custom projections you just click this icon now they've removed you know the upload and download uh, sections or not sections the words here but they're still the same as they used to be okay when we compare it to the old one of like oh let me go through the settings and see you know how I want to build my lineup with the pool size and everything that is now located over here on the left side okay and you can go in and go through and you get to these same options through hitting this little gear icon so you can see the correlation sim diversity everything that you everything that they had in the old version under settings to build lineups are still there they've just been moved okay so some people have asked like oh where do they move this where's that at so like that's that's the first part of it let me and yet again you know this is already contest has already happened so it doesn't matter what lineups we're doing and so by default you know the old one when you would build lineups you know you'd have your pool size and then you'd have 20 lineups and stuff here the way it goes now is it'll build you know the 5,000 lineups that you want and then it'll, it'll display you know the 20 or so um, whatever you're doing and we'll go ahead and let this build these lineups out and then we'll, we'll or at least I'll walk you through of how I go ahead and use this stuff and et cetera, et cetera. Um, why we kind of let you know all these sims uh, move and really there hasn't been a lot of changes in the UI that is that drastically different compared to the old one it's just more so locations and uh, et cetera, et cetera. now if you are you know if you have saber sim through us you might have a variety of different plans through us now this is the full contest sims the full um 300 a month membership but i'll still walk you through of how you're doing it if you just have the saber sim starter or if you have the smaller uh, subscriptions either through us or Saber Sim to where you might not have the contest sims and you might not be able to build a whole 5,000 lineups but that would just you know like I mean I have 5,000 here if you have other subscription packages you might be limited to 2,000 or whatever the the amount of number that you're limited to but I'll still walk you through on how to get through this and stuff as we let um, stuff load and I specifically want to use this previous Monday Night Football as an example of how I use Saber Sim and how I use how I probably use it differently compared to other people. Yet again, some people might be using it in a sense of, oh, I want to play, you know, 20 lineups in a 20 max, or maybe you want to play 150, whatever the case may be, and they'll run one build or they'll do a variety of things. I mainly just want to show you how I use it as soon as these lineups are done building. Um, because I typically don't just run everything from one build. And Sabersim has even added, you know, situations to where you can go through builds and save your favorites, et cetera, et cetera. Um, come on, man, let's get to let's get to five thousand. I know you can do it. This game's already happened. Let's go. We're so close. We're at forty nine hundred. Um, so we have our full. Eventually, eventually we're gonna get there. Let's load. Let's get in there. Go ahead and wait. All right. So all the lineups are done now. As I've stated, by default, it's going to leave you 20 lineups here. Now, for a lot of people, yet again, you might be doing 200, you might be doing 50 lineups, whatever. What I typically like to do is actually just look at the top 1,000 lineups. And the reason why I'm going to do this is I'll, I'll explain. And yet again, we haven't ran the contest sims yet. This isn't anything that's paywalled to higher subscriptions. We've just built lineups, okay? Now, yet again, the only variable would be whatever package you have would be the amount of lineups that you can build but for this point we haven't done anything crazy we haven't done contest sims we just have the default um you know saber scores that saber sim uses depending on what type of contest you're in you know you can sort them by certain percentiles which is just the percentiles of the projections uh, of each individual player of like what lineup you know how is this lineup performing in its 99th percentile outcome 95th etc you can look at it projected score if you're looking at live projections, you know, during, you know, either the, uh, you're running this post lock or whatever, you can look at that. You can look at actual score of what people were scored if you're looking at live contests and stuff like that. But for this example, specifically when we're entering a slate, we mainly are just looking at projected score, ownership, salary, and then the different Saber scores that Saber Sim uses. And you can go ahead and, as people have, have stated, if you're using, you know, certain Saber scores, you can go ahead and look at the, um, if I can go ahead and find it really fast, you can go ahead, let me go ahead and find it actually. 
if you're wanting to find out exactly like what is behind, you know, Saber Sims looking at their own thing, you can go ahead and grab this little eye icon and it'll show you the formula that is being used to calculate this, you know, or th this, you know, sorting of lineups, uh, et cetera. And yet again, where I'm at, if you're using a product, okay, which I think Saber Sim is really good, I'm not really ever questioning this part of their product, okay? And certainly for NFL, NHL, baseball, NBA, those are the four sports that personally I have no qualms or any issues or anything at all. I don't need to go in and adjust different thing or question why things are being sorted a certain way. Like they, it's sorted this way for a reason. They found it very successful and Sabersome is very good. And I think it's a top of the line product. Um, so like if you are curious on how things are being sorted, you can find it there. Um, now at this point, yet again, this isn't anything paid while this is just how it goes. And you can see where lamps are sorted, how much salary they're using, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I want to just show how things are drastically different. So, like, if you're using, like, SaberSim, you know, sorting by their um, by their own metrics, yet again, before contest sims or anything, what I typically do is look at the different, and not, not necessarily going one way or the other, but I just want to be aware of how drastically different, you know, the way that they're setting their lineups at. Like, yet again, if we're, I'm showing the top 1,000 here, and I mainly do that so I can see exposure rates of the top 1,000 lineups and stuff. But say if we're looking at, like, 20, right? How drastic do these 20 lineups change compared to the top 1,000, compared to it, not only the top 1,000, but we can compare them to, like, how many of these, what is the exposure rate? How does it change if you go from there, out of curiosity for me, you go from their Sabre score, say if you're in, say you're, you're playing the big contest, like, how drastically different is that from the lineups that is being recommended to you for contests that are very small? What changes? Who is more overweight? Who's more underweight? Typically, I'll go through and look at these, and then I'll go ahead and look at them again through what changes when we sort them by highest projection. You know, these are all the things that I look at and stuff. And yet again, you could do all this without, you know, the highest um, package or anything. Because we haven't ran the Sims yet. This is just what you can do with the lines that are being built. Before we get to the actual contest Sims, you know, and typically I'll do this post-contest Sims to see where exposure is. But let's just say, for example, you know, hindsight being 2020, we were unaware that Lamar Jackson is going to have, you know, a game of life throwing five touchdowns or or whatever. But say... You know, we're in a situation where we're looking at your top 20 lineups, whatever, and I just want to isolate and look at the lineups that have Lamar Jackson. Now, this is highlighting the top, you know, this has seven lineups of your 20 that have Lamar Jackson, okay? And you can see that right now he's being put with Bateman and Hill, uh, but you're going to, and yet again, hindsight being 2020, you might want to pair him with both Bateman and um, Andrews, but we can go through and see where things are at and see where things are going. Now, Typically, what I enjoy doing is say, like, I want a hunch for, or I have a hunch for a certain player, instead of just, you know, being like, I want an exposure rate of at least like 50% Lamar Jackson, right? Instead of doing that, okay, I would go at, like, and yet again, I'd run contest sims, which we'll do in a second, but I'm showing how people might use this stuff in general, like, oh, they just trust this, and then they're going to run sims or whatever, and they're like, oh, I want exposure higher. What I typically like to do is open a completely separate build and just see how things progress. Because, say, uh, what I'm trying to find, let's say on, on this one, if I'm, you know, looking for Lamar Jackson lineups, right? And yet again, this is like your top 20, you know, this is sorted by projected score. But when we look at the top 1,000 lineups, you may or may not argue that these might not be the top lineups that Lamar Jackson has. Because in the pool of 5,000 lineups we made, there's only 1,500 lineups with Lamar Jackson, okay? There's, a you know, 1,200 with Baker Mayfield, 1,500 Ky Kyler Murray, 638 of Justin Herbert, okay? So there are situations to where some Lamar Jackson lineups might fall through the cracks or get changed out. What I typically like to do is open another build. I just want to lock Lamar Jackson in and build, well, we'll just turn down, you know, a random player. And I want to build 5,000 lineups with just Lamar Jackson, okay? And while that's going, typically I go back to build one and I'll run contest sims and see how things are going. But say if I just have a hunch on a player, and this is, you know, yet again, hindsight, this is Lamar Jackson. But say I'm doing this for any slate, instead of, you know, getting the rinky-dink, and they're not even rinky-dink, but like, yet again, you have 5,000 lineups and build one and only 1,500 are Lamar Jackson. 
I'm not saying those lineups aren't bad, but let's try and find all the combinations you can do with Lamar Jackson. So instead of searching through the 1,500 or so that you have with Lamar, let's just open another build and find all the possible benefits, or all the, not the benefits, the, all the possible combinations that you could have with Lamar Jackson here. And so yet again, now we're at 2,800 lineups with just Lamar Jackson as your quarterback. You know, and I'm not saying this is the the in-game lineups that we're using, but when I go and sort through, because personally I'll play, you know, 20 max for the most part, or 20 lineups rather, in, you know, all the major contests and stuff, and say if I want, you know, my exposure when I'm uploading lineups to have, I want eight Lamar Jackson lineups, for example, here. I typically won't take them from build one. If, uh, you know, and yet again, that's why I don't upload the contest sims or upload favorites. I typically just look through these and then upload them myself and, and, and build them myself and, you know, at least look through what it's giving me. Um, but this is a great way. And, you know, a lot of people know that certainly for like NBA showdown, I typically, you know, captain just one guy. Okay. Once I go through, look at the contest sims, look at the output that these guys have. Uh, I'll do this. Um in a build and just lock a guy in and see what are the full combinations. Cause one thing that I found, especially for showdown, you know, say you're running um, NBA showdown or NFL showdown and you're looking at certain captains and there'll be situations where I want wide receiver one from one team as my captain, right? I want the quarterback. I want, you know, whatever other player I want to prioritize. And then there'll be times to where like you have three, you know, one V one positions left in that lineup and when you run it from build one, say you only have, you know, and you know, you you build five thousand lineups, and that captain in that build only accounts for like two hundred and forty lines in that five thousand pool, you might not be seeing all the combinations that you have in those one v one v one situations for those final three guys. And so here, for example, you know, we have a grand total of forty one hundred lineups with Lamar Jackson, okay? So, oops, let me get let me get this full thousand here because I just want to see the exposure rate of like the wide receivers. Oh, wrong one. Um, so like now, you know, yet again, Chris Godwin. Yet again, hindsight, we don't know Chris Godwin's going to break his leg or whatever. Uh, but now we can see the different exposure rates, like more accurately, of what you would get to if you're playing Lamar Jackson in there, and your and Saber Sim is already going to be stacking, you know, him with. I mean, this is like him and Henry, not a big. Not a big fan there, but you can go through and see, okay, let me see the Zay Flowers lineups. Let me see, you know, what these look like with, like, Mark Andrew or whatever. Like, this is how I typically use it because now, you know, with this build, we have Lamar Jackson and Andrews with 496 lineups. Whereas you look at build one and you look at the amount of lineups that have Lamar Jackson. I mean, well, Lamar Jackson, I mean, clearly we're running, you know, 100%. Uh, Jackson here, but now we like we can see like oh out of those like you know forty one hundred lineups like we now have four hundred lineups that have Lamar Jackson and Andrews together. Whereas like build one, you know you might be severely limited on on the amount of lineups that have that. So with here, where's Andrews? Here now we're just looking at. I mean it's even more. Uh, well, I mean here it's like you know in the pool he has. Um. 504 lineups, but that's either with, I mean, that can be without Lamar. That's just your full pool, right? So you would see that like, oh, we only have 93 lineups that have Lamar Jackson Andrews. And you go through and you look at projected score. These could be projected drastically different. That might not even get in certain outcomes or ranges depending on contest sims and stuff. Um, so like that, that's, you know, a way that I kind of use Saber Sim differently is once I run contest sims and see things, I'll, I'll then run different builds with forcing guys in just so I can see the different combinations that people get. So at this point, like you can do that for free without the contest sims or, or anything. Now, I don't even remember what contest sim we're running on, uh, which is we are looking at. Let me change. Let me make sure I have the big one really fast. We can just change. I don't remember if it was a millionaire maker. I don't think it was because i did not play this slate ah it was the monday special right we'll even title that monday so i can use this for an example here 
So now, you know, I've showed that you can use this without using the contest sims, just if you want to see combinations or if you want to see how builds will go. And you can, that for, you can use that for any sport, right? So yet again, we're going to run contest sims here. And yet again, we shouldn't be having to make... Let's unclick Lamar Jackson here. Yet again, going back to build one of how you would use stuff, you don't want to go in and manually start changing things before. You don't want to go in and start forcing in... Let's go ahead and remove that to zero so it's not automatically forcing him in 50. Um, when you're running contest sims, you have to trust the process, okay? This product is out there for a reason. People are successful with it for a reason, okay? Once you start, you know, getting your greasy little hands in there and making your own adjustments and making it do its own thing, you're kind of defeating the point of using that because then your own biases or your own opinions are in this more. The reason why this is so helpful because it probably helps you see things that you wouldn't see already, or you wouldn't see to start out with, and et cetera, et cetera. So now, once these contest sims are done, we use like the Monday, for example. Excuse me. And typically, I, I use contest sims for smaller contests. Like if I'm playing the, the 15 single entry stuff on like the showdown days, like Monday, Thursday, Sunday night and stuff. Um, because the contest sims are going to be drastically different. The Monday one is the big, you know, $500,000 to first contest. So of course, it's going to you know, encourage you or lean you towards playing, you know, lineups that are all over the place. And there's a real chance we don't see Lamar Jackson lineups or something, you know, in here. You know, not only did Lamar Jackson hit his 99th percentile, he had like a game of life, you know. We had him, Andrews, Bateman go off. Um, so there's a real chance like that stuff probably isn't going to show up, you know. A lot of the stuff is working off of things that are, you know, live projected scores or whatever. Now, we're looking at this, you know, post this game so we can actually see the the live score that this lineup did compared to the projected score etc cetera, etc cetera. so if we look at monday and we go to like uh what the heck brother man what the heck did they change the standard deviant ownership and i'm assuming they changed the uh, the risk adjusted roi uh, to just a different name but you can see that entering the slate this stuff may have actually changed I'm pretty sure it's actually given us the live score of like, did it win? Did it not win? Et cetera, et cetera. But entering the slate, hmm, let me see. Okay, that's actually hilarious because I had actually never goofed around with a new version uh, on a slate that had already happened. So, like, it's not showing like ROI or anything. So, just really fast, like, I'll use like the NBA, you know, 10 game opener on a Wednesday, right? Like, I'm not playing the slate, but we'll use it for the example of like how you do stuff. So, I've already made. The contest sims, right? That we've already talked about, you know, the main five dollar, the eighty-eight, and I'm using these different ones to show you the the changes that we would see in the field lineups, like the flagship and me, the high stakes and me stuff, and where things would go. And again, I'm not playing the slate. I don't know anybody who's playing in the game. Like I don't know any of these athletes. I don't know what the projections are. We're just gonna go through and like use this for example. Okay. Now, yet again, since the upload icon isn't here, this is where you would upload projections. Now you can do this two different ways. Okay, if you're using it through us, you can either, that's NHL, good lord, um, you can go through and either grab the projections from either Goldie, Sheets, whatever your situation you want to do. You can download the CSV from our website, or, and you could use it, so maybe, maybe you're not able to do something or you're using a different uh, product, or whatever, you can download the projections there and upload them through this but if you're using it through us, you can just hit this gear icon and just import, you know, the the projections you want to use. So say, hey, maybe Sheets is out of town this week and you're like, Sheets, are you going to upload projections? Uh, and he doesn't answer you in Discord because he's a busy guy. Uh, you can just import Goldie stuff. Saber Sim stuff is still good. Like if you look at the difference between like Saber Sims, Goldie, we're not seeing drastic changes. If you just... Average all three of them out, whatever you want to do there. Same thing with ownership. You can import whatever ownerships. You could use the projected ownership for Sabersim's flagships or the different situations here. You could use Goldies, Sheetses, the averages of all of these. Like, whatever you want to do here. We also have Bobby Fi's core here, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yet again, since this is just an example, I'm just changing random guys to show you how you would go about this. Yet again, we already have the contest sim selected. We're about to just build lineups. Now, yet again... Men's salary, really whatever you want to do. It, it doesn't matter. Some people use it a lot. Some people don't. That's not the discussion here. I'm just showing you how to use um, the product. Yet again, we're going to build 5,000 lineups, and I'll kind of go through real time of how I'd look at this. Now, yet again, I'm not playing the slate. 
I'm just going to be grabbing guys or doing stuff as an example of how things would happen if I was actually playing and stuff. So if, if I, for example, lock in somebody that ends up doing a bad job or somebody that's not even playing or like whatever, uh, this is just walking you through how to, how to, how to go through the product. Okay, so say like, you know, the, the lineups are done, right? We, we have our 20 lines here, and we'll see the exposure rates between these top 20 lines that are being listed by like the large slate. We're currently using the, la the large slate um, reactions and stuff. And yet again, the reason why I expose this, or ex not expose this, expand this to a drastically higher number that we will ever play is because I just want to see how the exposure rate changes between this. At the moment, you know, Emmanuel Quickie is in 100% of the top 20 lineups. What is he in the top 1,000 based on whatever sorting situation here. So, like, hey, probably Emmanuel Quickie probably seems like a good play on this slate or whatever. Like, that's what we would see um, going through here, but we can see where everybody kind of falls in line at. Yet again, you can do that without having, you know, the most expensive Saber Sim uh, situation. We can also just very quickly see where things change if we sort by highest projected ownership. What changes? You know, who's higher? Who's lower? Who's jumping up and down? You know? Yet again, if I was building, I'd be paying attention of who's, you know, who's a better play if we sort by projections and who's a better play if we sort by what the field is doing or what uh, Saber Sim is sorting these by. Let's just quickly, you know, run the contest sims since we've selected them. And the three I selected just for this example is the $5 main one that's a 100 grand to first, you know, huge, huge contest, whatever. It's, uh, it is, uh, how big is it? Uh, 120,000 people, or 118 thousand whatever um and then i have the 88 dollar uh box out say if you're playing high stakes or you, you prefer to play that and that only has you know <clears throat> 1900 people in it and then i also have selected the 40 dollar like single entry with like 700 people so we can see how things drastically change and stuff and so if we run these sims and we'll just say for example what changes when we sort by oh we're still running the contest sims Okay, so now we're here, right? We, we have all the lineups done, the contest sims are done running. So then we can go ahead and look at what the changes or what changes drastically in this. Now, this is just risk-adjusted ROI. I, I assume the, the standard deviation ROI is just risk-adjusted ROI. Is, is there older, um, you know, RA ROI? I'm going to assume that right now. Um, as I've not been told anything different, but notice how things change. And again, we're looking at the top thousand lineups. We're not playing; a, you can't play a thousand lineups. But what I like to do is just look at how this stuff changes. Okay, and we'll even kind of get this farther down. Like we'll use we we'll use like top one hundred lines or whatever to kind of condense of what the the changes that we're seeing here. So yet again, you know, quickly is probably just going to be locked in and stuff. But when we sort by different situations here, what you're looking at, and so like. In the main, we're just looking at, you know, the, the highest possible ROI. And yet again, we're playing against 120,000 people, right? So, like, projected win rate is going to be pretty low. Projected cash rate is going to be, you know, kind of iffy just in general because it's so big, you know, a variety of things can happen in a 10-game slate. You know, a lot of things are going to happen. There's a lot of variance in that and stuff. And so we're not really going to see anything too crazy between, you know, the win rates and the, you know, cash rates of these, et cetera, et cetera, because it's such a big contest you know there's a lot of things changing a lot of things going on and yet again the difference between return on investment sorting it by the highest that's like oh what is expected to win or what would you know give you the highest return on value now that could be a variety of things you know in a contest that big that could be lineups that are maybe not as you know palatable it, you might be playing more underdogs you might be playing uglier stacks you might be playing against the chalk because of the you know, return on investment is higher when the variance is higher. You know, it's going to probably show you more lineups that are either having less the chalk or building lineups that are quite different, like especially like in baseball or hockey. You know, the highest return on investment lineups might potentially be playing against the most favored team, the, the highest stack uh, or the most owned stack in baseball or hockey, et cetera, et cetera. Like we have to understand what we're looking at each time. You know, and so for this case, I really don't ever use the main contest as the contest that I'm using just because, like, it's so big, it's so massive, a lot of things can happen and stuff. And you're going to see that as you start looking it through, like, oh, what's the the cash rate on this? Now, that's just finishing in that, that 
you know, payout potential. Like this five dollar contest that has hundred and twenty thousand people in it, you know, we're paying out the top twenty three thousand people. So what is expected to at least cross that, you know, threshold of being in the top twenty three thousand? You know, this one is expected to cash a lot more, but win a lot less, finish, you know, in the top percentile of this contest a lot less. You know, and so you can use these to get, you know, ideas of how things would work. Same thing with dupe. Like I don't think we would worry about dupes in a contest this big, right? So that's a reason why I wouldn't necessarily use that contest. Like, that's not a contest that I'm, like, going out to win. The ones that I would focus on are more of the single entry stuff, the ones with lesser people. That's when I start looking at this more. So, for example, let's look at, like, the $40 single entry for today. And you can also see how drastically different we're going to have possible exposure rates between the different contests and stuff. So if we just sort by this one, who what's changing? Like, we see a drastic change, right? You know, this $40 single entry... Mano Quickie is no longer the highest exposed guy. It has now changed to Nick Richards, okay? We're seeing that, you know, it's easier, and yet again with this guy, I mean, anything can happen, you know, but we can see that in a smaller contest, we have a much better idea of what lineups would probably prefer better. Now, anything can happen. Anybody can get injured. Anybody can underperform. Anybody can overperform. But when we start looking at this, you know, we start seeing, you know, lineups that are looking, you know, more decently of like, I mean, we're just looking at risk or ROI with standard deviation and stuff. And we're seeing that, hey, man, they got a chance of cashing way more than, you know, in the bigger slates. We have uh, lineups that, you know, if, if we look at the cash rate, it's probably gonna be pretty chalky compared to the cash rate for the big GPP. So if we click this, we're probably going to see quite a lot of own. Yeah, we see a lot of high owned guys, a lot of chalk guys. Uh, that's a uh, projection, my bad. We're going to see a lot of guys that carry higher ownership because it's a smaller contest. They're more likely to work out. You're more likely to cash in higher contests and stuff because you're playing the guys that are probably going to be good. Whereas if you're playing the big contest, you kind of need variance to be in your favor in order to have lineups that finish higher up, et cetera, et cetera, and stuff. Um, and you could really see this more with showdown and or um, smaller slates. I mean, this is a 10 game or anything can happen here. But typically I'll go through and, you know, go through lineups and see, you know, what is, you know, the drastic change between the cash rates, the win rates, what the projected scores are. Yet again, we haven't even really looked at projected scores. We're just looking at the sim cat or the uh, the contest sims results for this stuff. If we're sorting by projected score, things might be drastically different. Um, you know, we're seeing kind of lineups that are projected to cash very well, but their win rate goes down, or it's lower than compared to other stuff. Like, if we're looking at the win rate of this one, which is the highest projected lineup at 275.4, and then you then look at, you know, what is this contest looking at when we adjust it by, you know, risk-adjusted, I'm assuming this is standard deviation, um, we're looking at 275.4. This one is 259.7. You know, drastically lower projections, but potentially more upside for guys performing better than what their projections are showing, um, not being duplicated nearly as much. Like, once you start going through and looking at how drastically different these are, this is why I typically don't just grab, you know, Oh, I'm not just going to, you know, grab, I mean, this is a single entry contest, but I'm not just grabbing my top 20 lineups out of any th one situation here. I might be missing on stuff. I might not be missing on stuff. So that's typically why, like, I personally build different ones and then pull the lineups that I like from each individual build, you know, because we're seeing, you know, drastically different changes and stuff. And it's all about how or what you want to get out of DFS if you're using contest sims to build your lineups, if you're using contest sims to see what potentially uh, higher own lineups are. Now, again, this is a 10 gamer, so I doubt we got to worry about a lot of duplications in like a single entry contest. But say if you go here and we look at this, you know, the 40 single entry, and then you look at dupes in a smaller contest and or showdown, you can usually find the, the lineups that are going to be, I mean, here we don't have any expected duplication for any of this stuff. Um, but you can use the dupes to see, hey, this line is probably going to be popular. You know, it projects well, it has a high cash rate, it has a least, you know, a good percentage to win the contest. And you can go through and see, oh, okay, this is the lineup I might want to avoid, or this is the lineup I might want to make, you know, a change to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you can save 
to your contest and then just upload the CSV directly. If you still like the old, oh, I forgot I changed it. Like the old one, you would be like download CSV. You can just click this gear or you can click the three dots here, ellipsy. I don't remember what these are called. And then you can just actually just save the CSV if you want to manually upload it you know, like the old school way or like, you know, the boomer way of doing it to where you pull the reserve CSV from DraftKings, you open it up in Excel or Google Sheets, you then download this to a CSV, you then copy and paste, you know, the laps that are here, you copy and paste it to the DraftKings CSV, you then save that CSV, then you re-upload it to DraftKings. That's what Saberson is trying to do when it's turn when it's saying, you know, save the contest if we can, I don't have these here. Uh, that's what they're trying to, you know, save you hours a week with just automatically doing this, uh, except I just don't use it that way, but that, that's kind of what everything's being moved to, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yet again, you know, what I typically don't like looking at is these bigger slates. So you have to kind of go in like a more aggressive approach. Let's look at like this Thursday night football game. Now, I don't even know who's playing. You know, it, it's Wednesday right now. I could I don't even know who's playing on Thursday, right? I guess it's Minnesota and Rams. Just found out that right now. You know, we're looking at this in a, in a day before. Let's go ahead and just add a sim that I know for a fact I'm playing a contest on. And typically, I don't name stuff. I I, I usually already know what I'm looking at. Uh, we would be, or I would be looking at the, uh, we're looking at, I don't remember, bubble screen? Pretty sure they're called bubble screens. Yeah, we're looking at like the $15 so right now. You know, we have a $1,915, we have a $3,915. Let's use the 25 k bubble screen here. So, like, if I was just entering or kind of starting over, you know, I'll show you how I go through here. So we are looking at a, we're looking for this one here. And yet again, because I'm not, I don't reserve ahead of time, I'll, I'll just find my own contest. I don't really mind doing that here. This is for Thursday, okay? It's a single game showdown, okay? Yet again. Don't know who I'm playing. Literally first time. I don't even know who's active for these teams. Okay? This is where we're at. Yet again, I don't I doubt we have yeah, so like Goldie Sheets hasn't uploaded projections yet because this game happens tomorrow. You know? Let's just go ahead and change randomly two things. It could be ownership, it could be project you just gotta do anything. You know, we can build lineups here. I wanna build five thousand lineups. You know, so we build that and we'll check in once that's once that's done. Alright, lineups just done. Right off the bat. We have twenty. We've got a you know, you know, personally changes like I just want to see the top like, let's see, you know, we'll do we'll do like two thousand here. It, it's an arbitrary number. I just want to see what the exposure rates are right now for like their single game stuff. So like right now, you know, we'll look through these lineups and we're seeing yet again. I don't know. I don't even know who these people are. Don't even know what the projections are. We're just looking through. I I just know off the bat. Hmm. Tutu Atwell as like a mid range captain. Hmm. Typically they look good if we're looking like by projections but yet again we're just looking at like single game we're looking at you know saber sim single game stuff being sorted by whatever the hell they want to use it for which would be you know if we want to check again we can find that pretty sure i'm an idiot we can find it right here my whatever the hell they're sorting by that's this here but i can go through and i can i can just visibly see that the projections are kind of all over the place here we have some 90s here 97 99 97 96 I'm just looking at projections right now and then I can go through and I'll be like man where are you know we have Atwell we have Williams we have Cup Aaron Jones Aaron Jones Darnold Jefferson you know we're kind of all over the place and stuff some people might just be like hey you know I personally wouldn't do this I think this is kind of an ignorant way to go about it but some people might just be like I'm playing my 20 max and I'm just running whatever it gives me here I think that's a gross use of of this tool uh I don't I don't think that's a good use of I don't think that's good use of this at all um i'm running my contest sim for my 15 dollar 1900 person single entry contest and we can see how things drastically change here once this contest sim is done running okay so the contest sim is done running we haven't sorted by anything yeah this is just roi based on whatever that is whatever their uh thing is so I want to just look at really fast yet again. We're looking at we have the top two thousand lineups here of our five thousand pool. I open the contest sim or results right, and I just want to sort by hey, what is the ROI standard deviation, whatever it is. Okay, top one two two at will leave in forty nine forty eight nine. Now yet again for me because I run single lineups for these showdowns for NFL, 
and or if I want to do 20 max, I still want to go through and find who's the best captain, you know, like, I personally don't like having a huge amount of, of captains, I don't like having shit spread out, I just don't like that, okay, we're looking at top 2000, and we're kind of all over the place, uh, but we see the top one has like 2-2 at will, that's kind of weird, you know, value tied in, or not tied in, value, like, mid-range play as captain, usually not the best play, this seems more about it, Aaron Jones, Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Cooper Cup, Williams, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, I'm just seeing this, and we're looking at this as from a, uh, you know, standard deviation ROI. I'm like, these these lineups kind of make a hell of a lot more sense than this top lineup, okay? But yet again, we're starting from scratch. We don't know what's going on here. So what I do is I'll go through, and I'll then look at the win rate of these lineups for this specific contest. Now, yet again, I'm not changing anything with the field lineups. I'm trusting SaberSim. That they're doing the correct thing, and yet again, this is the day before, we don't have correct ownership, I'm just looking, I'm going through what I would do for my own thing, okay, we then look at win rate, okay, what is the win rate in this contest, and we don't see Tutu Atwell in the captain at all, okay, well, maybe we do here, um, but we started seeing a lot of salary being used, we're not leaving a lot of salary on the table, that's like the first thing, for me, it's like, hey, that's probably a good thing to see, I don't really want to be playing laps that are leaving, you know, 4,000, 1,200, 1,800 on the, on the table, in a single entry this small, right, it's love and Tutu Atwell, might, might, might be giving more, more credit to him than I thought was possible, yet again, I don't even know what the salaries are for these freaking goobers, uh, well, that's why we have, you know, like, several, several expensive guys, um, so I go through and we're looking at the, the current win rate, you know, the expected win rate, like, oh, what the heck is this guy coming out of nowhere? Mr. Parkinson's, uh, Parkin, whatever the heck that guy is out of nowhere. Kind of weird. Uh, why, why is that like a one-off in here? Here, here he is again. We're in the top 20 now. Yet again, the reason why I do 2000 is because if you're sorting by like top 20, right? Yet again, we haven't had any, we haven't added any filters yet, but like you're, you're, we're cut off right here, right? Uh, I, you know, I want to go through, I want, I want to see what these lineups are looking like. I want to see, maybe I'll go through and look at like the, the team stacks, the exposure rates and stuff. And I need a lot more lineups than just 20 to look through. That's why I just automatically put it at a, at a big number. Uh, so I can just kind of go through and, and, and stare at this stuff. Okay. Now that's win rate. You know, now we can go back up yet again. Let me see what things are showing when we look at the cash rate in this. What changes? What exposure are changing? Now this is flex. We were looking at the captain before. And what I'll typically do is I'll see, you know, who is bouncing up and down here. So for me, just right off the bat, yet again, this is Wednesday, a day before. Don't even know what's going on. I'm seeing that, you know, Brandon Powell, Will Richards, Blake, Joshua K, the Rams defense, Johnny, Jordan, Ty Chandler, Demarcus Robinson, uh, having very, very little exposure. Kind of just a waste of time. Just a waste of lineups, right? So we can go ahead and just take these bad boys out. I just, and yet again, I haven't gone to a different build. I'm just like, these these guys are probably not going to work, right? We're, we're looking at the the cash rate currently right now. We look at whatever whatever we're sorting by. Like, the guys at the bottom, come on, not going not gonna to work. We'll apply that. Let's not even waste time looking at, like, those types of lineups, right? So now we start seeing cash rates of, like, oh, hey, 2-2 Atwell is probably looking good because you can fit so many expensive guys in there so hey he's probably a better play than i first thought because we have so many expensive guys in this slate we don't look at jones cooper cup and i'm like these now now see these captains seem like a way more of a good time than you know some of these other guys that are like wasting space right just absolute waste of space and then i accept that hey man if, if colby parkinson has just an amazing game i'm not gonna win right but what I do, whenever I do my shows and, you know, whenever I talk with Bobby and explain like, oh, this guy looks good or, oh, this guy's looked good or whatever in Sims, this is typically what I'm doing. And I'll do this for different Sims and look at now. I have not picked a lineup yet. I have not uh, entered a lineup. I have not done anything. I'm, I'm simply just using the tool to look through the different builds, the different lines, what's what's being showed here. Let's say I get to a point where I'm here and I'm like, oh, let's just see what this looks like. If we start looking at like, you know, five ones for like minnesota right now yet again that's a small portion of the field but let's just say i just want to see that where do these fall in line at i'm not gonna maybe i won't play them maybe i will whatever the case may be i can just i'm looking at the cash rate of yet again we're sorting by cash rate right now and we see oh this one ranks 261 out of 5,000, or out of uh, out of uh, 307 no yeah this is the 5,000. um and then we see like a pretty significant drop off between like 288 303 
320, you know, I, I'll go through and I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll use this, I'll use the tool that Saberson has given us to see different things, okay? So, let's go back here, let's look at ROI again, um, you know, we see different captains pop up, and so at this point, you know, maybe I've determined looking at the different contest sims of like, hey, it seems like two twos popping up a lot, I might, hey, Maybe I want to play Cooper Cup, whatever the case may be. I'm not playing quarterbacks in the captain. So what I then do is I will go in, look at captain. And yet again, people may argue that this is how you should use this. Maybe, maybe not, whatever the case may be. I don't remember if this is going to take everybody off. Please don't. Okay, cool. Uh, let's just say I just want to look at captains between the expensive guys, right? And I can do this for different builds. But I'm just using these three captains, okay? We'll build the 5,000 lineups between these guys, okay? And I'll show you, the, let's, let, let's, uh, let's open this to show the difference, right? Because I know for a fact I'll find the example that why I do this here. This is, yeah, it's new. We'll go on the wrong one. Wow, this one's running here. That's NBA. We'll go to NFL. We'll go here. Build one still running. So let's say, for example, you know, with build one, the limitation might be, you know, we're, we're looking at only 770 lineups made with Cooper Cup and the captain. You know, in the top 2,000, we have, you know, 416 of those, right? Let's say I start going through and I start, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious on how things are being made. I'm looking at where everybody's kind of ranking. And again, we're looking at risk adjusted or, or ROI standard deviation. And let's just say, for example, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I want to play him with his quarterback, uh, which I don't even know who that is. That would probably be Stafford, right? And then let's say I want to play him with Ty Chandler, for example. It doesn't matter who it is. We're, we're just using this for example. And I can start going through and I'll pay attention to where the ranking is on these, where the predicted score is, where all these numbers are at, where things are going. And so at this point, we're coming down to a situation to where now we only have 87 lineups in the pool that has a combination of these three guys. Let's say for whatever reason, I want to add the Rams to here. Okay, we're, we're dropping off pretty quickly between the top rankings for the ROI. Like this would indicate that, uh, you know, this is probably not a good build. This would be a pretty bad thing to see personally for me entering. I would not want to play the lineup that's ranked 200 or 2,256, right? Uh, we can go ahead and keep going. Let's say, for example, I'm going to throw 2-2 Atwell in here. You know, and so now we're at a situation of like, okay, these are the two possible outcomes if we're using these five players, the 1v1 between Williams and Jefferson. Okay, now the issue that I want to solve by running different builds with, you know, a more centralized captain is like, what if there's more? What if there's more 1v1s here? Or maybe I'm like 1v1 and shit on DraftKings hand building. And I mean, this is Jefferson at 11.8. This is... Williams at 11-2. Uh, clearly, there's a lot more money out there. What if I, for example, want to play Jordan Anderson uh, instead of Kyron Williams or Jefferson? Well, we don't even have that lineup built in the top, in, in the 5,000 here, right? I can't see what that would even look like, okay? I can't see what the expected, you know, ROI or expected performance of the lineup that would not have Williams, not have Jefferson, but have Jordan Anderson. I think that'd be a pretty bad lineup based on the, the drastic difference of projection, but I want to see what Saberson would say, you know, but I, t I physically don't have that lineup in the 5,000s, right? Whereas we come here, and now I've built lineups that have, you know, it's centered around these three guys. And so yet again, starting off, if we're looking at the build that has this here, we only have 770 Cooper Cup lines, right? We might be missing stuff. We might be missing 1v1s. So I rebuild it again centralized stuff and now we have 1700 cooper cup lineups to look at okay let's see for and I, this might be atrociously gross i'll move this aside so i can see i don't even know if we're gonna have the uh i mean again i'm just grabbing random guys uh but let's see if we can get more guys in that one ugly lineup for example uh which we don't even have the rams on here so yet again, the Rams lineup that we were using, for example, wasn't even made here. This, this lineup doesn't even exist in this build, right? So, you know, oh, actually, that's uh, that's why I was sorted by 20. Let's sort it by 2,000. 
Probably was. That was the main thing. So let's go Rams again. Let's see if I can build this ugly light up and see if it can give me more, you know, 1v1s. We had 2-2 two -two as this guy here. Let's see if it gives us any more if it's just those two here. It's literally just those two. So, like, yet again, it's not building, you know, the Jordan Anderson because it's a bad lineup, right? So, like, if you're hand building or doing stuff, this would be an example of, like, hey, if you're playing this lineup with, like, Jordan Anderson, you might be an actual idiot because it doesn't even build that lineup. Like, that, that'd be a bad lineup to build. Or if you're comparing, you know, your own, you know, hand builds and stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, that's th – this is how I use SaberSim, right? I haven't really even talked about, like, oh, saving the lineups yet. I'm I'm looking through of how things are – how things would be, would be ran. Now, yet again, we have – we could run the contest sims again. Now, it's using that same – field lineup it's just using these lineups here so typically i use the first build to see where things are at find the captains that are popping up or find the guys that are i'm more interested in i'll then go to a secondary build just use those guys to make sure i'm just getting lineups that have those and if for example i want even more lineups that have cooper cup or whatever i'll do another build with just cooper cup i'll do another build with just jo justin jefferson i want to see all the possibility of lineups that I can do, and I think that comes from me being more of a hand builder. I want Sabersome to assist me in that. I don't want to be I don't want to be fighting through build one and then be like, why doesn't it have you know more Justin Jefferson lineups, whatever the case may be. Um, but I'll go through and I'll look at the sim, and yet again, it's using the same filled lineup. It's just using these lineups versus that contest sim, and now I can look at what is the win rate between. These three captains here, with or not even between these three captains, but these lineups. You know, yet again, build one, I'm getting like 2-2 Atwell. I'm getting, and I don't even, yet again, don't know if 2-2 is a good play or not. I'm just saying, you know, looking at, at this, I'm not wasting my time with 2-2 Atwell lineups. I'm not wasting my time with other random captains that I'm not interested in. I'm just using this sim to see, hey, looking here, like, hey, Williams is actually popping off quite a lot in the win rate here. We look at... You know, standard deviation, you know, ROI, Jefferson, Williams, Cooper Cup, Jefferson, Cooper Cup. And the reason being is because the performances of wide receivers are typically wider, or their outcome ranges are wider than running backs and quarterbacks. So, like, you're going to see that's probably, that's why, you know, you want to just play wide receivers or tight ends in the cat. I mean, when, there's probably no good tight ends on the slate. But between, like, these three captains, hey, you know, risk-adjusted ROI or ROI standard deviation, it leans more to the wide receivers than it does Kyron Williams and stuff. Even though the exposure rate is higher on Kyron Williams, the lineups that have Cooper Cup and, and, and Jefferson are showing to be probably better lineups for, you know, this slate or whatever. And then yet again, this is just a single entry contest. So, like, personally for me, I don't typically like just going through and automatically, like, oh, I'll just play the number one ranked, you know, lineup in the single entry. That's why I typically don't just save the contest and just upload. I like to go through and, you know, see what I like about these contests. Like, double kicker? What is this? I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at the projection. But, like, why is it giving me double kicker here? Is there not a cheaper guy at the bottom? Why is Tutu Atwell not oh, no, at Will's being used? Is Why is he the cheapest here? Why, why, like what, you know, I'll go through and I'll look at these builds of what's going on, you know, same thing, you know, let's like not build stupid and like actually, you know, possibly run through of how this would look. Okay. So we're on the right thing. I want to look at Cooper cup as the captain, right? We're playing, uh, Matthew Stafford with Cooper cup directly. Okay. Probably looking at the exposure rate. So in these lineups, we have 40% with Cooper Cup captain Stafford together. We then have Aaron Jones as the next highest guy with this combination of lineups. Let's go through and keep looking, you know, at this. So when you're paying attention and looking at this, you know, we understand what salary we're, we're working with. So we're, we're you know, we're, we're using quite a lot of the salary. So our 1v1s at the bottom are probably going to be values, okay? We're, we're probably going to see 2-2 two, two out will be pretty... Why does it keep doing that? We're probably going to see Tutu Atwell be, you know, used quite a lot because he's a value play. He's he's cheap, you know, with this combination of players, you know, you got to go dumpster diving and whatnot. Now it makes sense of, oh, now that's why I have double kicker because if I'm paying up for so many guys, I, I need value plays and they're probably projected better than the other guys around it, it's, you know, so on and so forth. Let's say, you know, I want Tutu Atwell, okay? 
at this point, you know, we just have two, we have a two, we have two positions open on our lineup. We're looking at a one v one. So now that's risk adjusted ROI. I haven't, I'm not really messed with anything right now. I just want to see what changes. What is the safer options of those? The cash rate is higher on, hey, Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold at his raw projected point and Brandon Powell, Sam Darnold and Allen. It's, it's probably going to be Sam Darnold and, you know, a cheap guy because Sam Darnold projects a score in, you know, 19 points to whereas, so like maybe if you're, you know, if you're, if your main goal is like limp across and just min cash, which I don't know why that would be, but like, hey, you could, you could go Sam Darnold here. You know, if we look at win rate, it's going to take Sam Darnold out and most likely, you know, start getting kickers and defenses and stuff. Despite the fact that this is a lower projection than, no, I didn't even look at the Darnold one. Let's just see the projection with Darnold is probably 96. Yeah, so we're at 96, 97 here, but that's because Darnold is for, you know, projected to do 19 points. This guy's basically projected to do nothing, you know? So like cash wise, higher projected. Uh, but like win rate is, is pretty shot. It's pretty gone. We look at ROI. We're looking at lineups that are projected for less because we're not playing, you know, Darnold and basically like a putt that's going to expect to score zero. But we can then see where people are at. What are these projected scores? Who are they with? Et cetera, et cetera. You know, I can look at, uh, we'll go ahead and look at win rate. You know, if this combination, if Cooper Cup, Jones, Stafford goes off, what is the win rate in the Sims, you know, for the last couple of guys? That's how I go through and you, why is it not showing this exposure here? That's how I go through and look at this. So like, again, I have the top, I have the top 2000 lineups ranked with this combination of players. We're looking at a grand total of 70 here with the like 70, you know, combinations for your last two guys. So like, it's how you save yourself to look through stuff. Maybe I just want to see, hey, what is the highest predicted score with this combination? It's probably going to be the Sam Darnold stuff again. Um, but this is how I go through and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the ranking here is projected score. So this is ranked 19th out of the projected score. So even if you take these out and you go to your 19th projected guy or your 19th lineup, it would be this one here right? Let's go ahead and put these guys back on so we understand what we're looking at. We go Darnold, uh, not Darnold, we go Stafford, Jones, I think I had Tutu Atwell, right? Okay, so that's where we're at in project, you're, out of all the lineups we built, this one's 19th, okay? But then, probably be a pretty bad lineup to throw in there because you're expected to not do very well. You know, whereas the risk-adjusted ROI uh, for the or the uh, standard deviation ROI ranks that lineup pretty freaking low. Sam Darnold, I don't remember exact. I think it was the, this ninety six one. We went from having that as the nineteenth highest projected lineup to the contest sims are saying that is the three hundred and seventy second or three hundred and seventy three hundred and three hundred twenty second best lineup. So probably a bad lineup to enter in the sims or to enter in the contest, because we don't want to do that for Darnold. Whereas we change this, and now like, hey, this lineup with these combinations are looking pretty good. We have quite a lot, and we have two in the top 10, quite a lot in the top 100, which typically I like to try and sit at the top 100, uh, or at least try and fit in there. And since we're not seeing a ton here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six... Six in the top 100 might be a combination that is leaving a bit uh, for for granted. Now, it's probably going to cash well. We're probably going to see this combination have a lot in the cash. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we have eight. So, like, I go through and I'm like, this lineup is probably good enough to compete with certain things, but probably not the lineup I want to go with. You know, how do I get... Typically, if I'm, you know, landing with, you know, a bill that has a lot in the top 100, which maybe that would indicate that, like, what what do we got to ch- what do we got to take out to add more guys in the top 100? I took out Jones, and we started seeing that Atwell, as I said, you know, high exposure rate, like, you know, 33% of the pool. We have Cooper Cup and Stanford or Matt Stafford um, in this because quarterback plus. You know your wide receivers. Like, what what are the combinations that are keeping you in like the top 
100 you know type of builds or 100 lineups when you rank them by the sims uh, for this contest and that's showing that uh, it's probably not aaron jones it's probably other guys other than aaron jones who that is you know we can go through and find out or whatever that or that's typically what i do and so i'll look at combinations of i'll go through and look at builds of where they fall in line in terms of ranking of projections sim expectations contest sims expectations um duplicate here we'll look at dupes really fast too it's like we'll use this one for example we won't have any biases entering so like what is what is the you know what is a, a lineup that's probably gonna be duplicated that might that that's probably a good lineup like lineups that are going to be duplicated pretty well that means they are expected to cross the cash line which is you know the top 20 percent of the contest or whatever it's showing well in sim showing well in projection so being aware of that lineup or where that is or being aware of what that build is is you know where i think saber sim is really useful so like for example in the sims this lineup is optimal three times it's projected yet again this is the day before whatever this is usually more accurate as we get closer to to the contest this one right now is expected to be played three times three times three times and because like it's shown to be you know potentially an optimal lineup this optimal is expected to be optimal seven times you know so this one would probably carry more uh, duplications later in on Thursday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This one's expected to be optimal four times. Expected dupes right now would be three, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so this is this is how I use Saber Sim. I I know Sheets does it differently. I know Bobby. I know typically everybody run or uses this tool um, differently. That's kind of why the first part of this video was like, hey, this is where they move buttons to or whatever. And then the last like, you know. 35 40 minutes have, has been how I use this or how I build things or how I you know go about and use things and maybe that'll enlighten you of how I talk about it in, in videos whenever I'm doing previews with Bobby or whatever may be happening in those situations or whenever you're viewing you know my content or whatever um, but this is you know at least a walkthrough of how I use Saber sim maybe learn something maybe you didn't but either way this is uh, kind of a walkthrough on my part I will talk to you guys uh later and probably a different show thank you for watching thank you for being here